morning everyone, um, Billy from Rundug again. Just want to, there's quite a few people have been asking us about certain parts of the harness and why it's shaped like that, designed like that. I uh, just wanted to give you a bit of a, an insight into why we make the harnesses the way we do. Um, I'm not going to do a long video because the one's recently been dragging on for ages, so two socks is ready to go, harnessed up. Beautiful day in Scotland, um, still a bit warm for running dogs for us. We'll be looking at getting out this week. Um, just, just short stuff just to start with, but hopefully the temperatures will drop soon. We're usually out earlier in the year than this, but as you can see, lovely day. So, right, I want to talk to you, I'm going to be quite specific this time. I'm not going to talk about the whole harness, I really want to just talk about this area here. Um, you'll see a lot of other harnesses, the, way, the reason why we've got ours like this. You'll see a lot of other harnesses that sit quite far back on the, the back, uh, well, the top of the scapula here. Um, and something that's really been sticking out to me is the amount of pressure that gets loaded down onto the It's negative pressure. It's a, it's a waste of energy for the dog, for one, and it's obviously going to, you know, it could result in injuries in the shoulder blades and stuff like that as well. Um, so we, we, try and, we, we try and design our harnesses to sit quite far forward here. We want all the force to be coming from down here. Are you able to drop that down a bit? All the force we want coming from down here. We don't want this negative pressure on here. So, for example, when that dog's pulling in the harness, like so, if this neck of the harness goes across here, if it comes up here, when that dog's pushing into the harness, all the force is getting pushed down on the dog from there. So it's a lot of wasted energy going down through that front end of the dog. What we want is all that energy going straight through the spine, right through the back end of the, right through that gang line. To, so it's, it's like a horizontal force. It's all going that way. We don't want any negative pressure coming down on here at all. So we angle this harness slightly forward here. So when the dog's sitting relaxed, the harness won't sit right at all. It'll... You know, the, some of the angles will be out here. You know, if you just show me a photograph of the dog, I'll stand up. Come yeah, on, two socks. Come yeah, on. Nope. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Good boy. We're not going for a run. No. Stand still. So if I pull this on here and push its head down, that's how I want the harness to look. If I just show you, take a photograph or a video like that, you see these angles are out here. You see a bit of slack there, a bit of slack here. The harness isn't going to look right on a relaxed dog. What we want to see is when that's pulled tight and that head is down. Now, see when I'm pushing his head down slightly like this and pulling that tight? It's an exaggeration here that it should actually be a bit higher. Um, especially for mono sports. See when I'm pushing down here? Try this on your own dogs with your own harnesses and see how much pressure has been asserted to this area here. And have a think about that. How, think how when that dog's pushing forward, there's so much pressure pushing down on the dog. It's not going that way. It's pushing down there. And that, I don't like that. That's going to have a lot of wear and tear. Hold on just now. There's going to be a lot of wear and tear up here and a lot of pressure on there that doesn't need to be. So like I say, we like ours to be further forward. This bit, a bit of slack in here until that head's getting pushed down like a hound does and it starts to push and drive forward. And even when he's got his head down like that, that, that still isn't pulling back on there. And that's what we want. We want all that, all that force coming from this front end going right the way through that gang line like that. Now, just quickly on this as well, is there a need for a, a harness to be different for a sled and for monosports? Bear this in mind what I'm talking about here. Because we, we pull that further forward, a bit more length in here, a bit more length in here, because this is further forward, once that dog is up and driving, you can have a lower pull point, and the harness is, is, isn't going to be dragging up into the track here, here. Because again, it's fitted for a hound, you can have that pull, higher pull point without it pulling down too, back, too much at the back here. So it's a really versatile fit, and the reason why it's a really versatile fit is because it's balanced, it's balanced out for those hounds driving forward when they're getting their head down and they're rolling that front end of the body. So that's pretty much it for today. It was just like I say, it was quite specific 
little video just about this part here. Um, I'm going to pull this harness tight again, just so you get one final look and see the angle that we've got this. Again, go back, have a look at your own harnesses, um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll see a lot of them are quite extreme. They will be coming right across here. And it, a lot of it's to do with this collared fit at the back here as well. If it's an X, there's a good chance it'll be sitting too far back. That's why we do this collared rounded back, um, so it's sitting a bit further forward. It gives a bit more, more of an extension there. Um, so I'm going to pull it tight, and then you can see what I'm talking about. And like I say, just have a look at your own harnesses, have a look at photographs of other brands, and you'll see what I'm talking about. That fits really snug on there, it's really nice. And it's there we go, folks. Thank you, have a nice weekend.